Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. A-Tech covers new topics that are curious people like you love. Today, for example, we're going to tackle aircraft carriers, but one in particular. In keeping with the usual pattern, the Americans have gone big again. They made a giant aircraft carrier, but apart from that, what is so special about it? Stand till the end of the video to find out. Let's go. By definition, an aircraft carrier is a warship. Its primary purpose is to transport and operate fighter aircraft. It is essentially a floating airbase. An aircraft carrier remains mobile. It allows the transfer of a real offensive and autonomous army that travels the world. This is done without diplomatic ties. Yes, navigation in internal seas remains independent on territorial severity. These platforms are cities in themselves. Indeed, aircraft carriers remain very lively. There are plenty of electronics as well as an army of naval air combat planes and helicopters. This easily explains why the maintenance is more expensive. The warship must be a certain specific length and width. This is required so that the aircraft can maneuver their takeoff and landing safely on deck. This type of ship also has a lot of firepower. It can store missiles. These are most often used against other enemy ships, or even submarines, defined as hostile. Often these ships are accompanied by other ships providing protection. Cruisers, anti-aircraft fragilence, and nuclear attack submarines, among others, can be found among the fleet. But what exactly defines a ship as an aircraft carrier? Well, the structure of an aircraft carrier is unique. The aircraft carrier consists of the following elements. First of all, a flight deck. As the name suggests, this allows aircrafts to take off and land on the ship. Then there is an island. It is located on the side of the bridge, and in two words, is the control tower of the ship. Then the elevators are available to move the planes between the decks and the hangars. It is important to know that there is space below decks. Moreover, there are storage and maintenance hangars for the planes, but also fuel and ammunition stocks. The crew is also housed below deck. On the bridge, however, is quite different. There are catapults that allow the planes to accelerate for the first time so they can take off from the deck. And during the landing, there are resting strands. They are literally the landing brakes of the aircraft during the landing. The platform also has a crew of specially trained sailors. The crew on deck is responsible for steering the ship. They do this through the ship's decision center. It is also known as the navigation bridge. Next are the personnel in the engine room. They are responsible for dispatching and executing orders from the bridge. Other personnel are in charge of piloting aircraft and maintaining them. Thus, you'll have pilots, mechanics, and technicians in charge of takeoff and landing. You're probably wondering how it all started. We are too. Let's take a closer look. So this whole adventure starts with the Wright brothers in 1903. So yes, we know you're going to say that they only took off the first plane. But very quickly, this new way of traveling interests the American army. It was the army itself that suggested using a plane to take off from a ship. The first successful attempt was made by the American Enjuin Ely. The test was carried out on November 14, 1910. The warship used was the Birmingham. Following the test, the first real aircraft carrier built was the Argus. The Argus was equipped with two elevators. They were used to take planes up and down from the deck. But it was during the Second World War that the usefulness of this was really put to the test. The battles in the Pacific pitted the Americans against the Japanese. In fact, today, these are the only battles involving aircraft carriers. Other countries now have aircraft carriers. According to Jane's, a military intelligence reference agency, the United States leads in terms of aircrafts currently in service. But it is closely followed by China, the United Kingdom, Russia, France, Italy, India, and Thailand. But the US is not the only leader in terms of quantity. It also leads thanks to its giant aircraft carrier. We're talking about the USS Gerald R. Ford, measuring no less than 332.8 meters long and 40.8 meters wide. It weighs nearly 100,000 tons. The USS Ford easily tops the list of the world's larger aircraft carriers. Not surprisingly, it can fit 75 planes and helicopters. The USS Gerald R. Ford, better known as the USS Ford, has now become the most expensive aircraft carrier in history. It cost the Pentagon just over 13.2 billion. That's a little over 10 billion euros. It's named after the 38th President of the United States. The nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is the first version of the Ford class. Its objective is to gradually replace the Nimitz class. By 2020, it will welcome the famous F-35C. The F-35C is a naval version of the multi-role fighter from the United States. It costs a whopping 800 million in additional sea travels. The US president at the time, Donald Trump, mentioned the USS Ford during the inauguration speech. 
However, it wasn't all compliments. Even though Trump arrived in his inauguration, even landed on the deck aboard Marine One, he was quick to tackle the carrier. Among other things, he mentioned its funding and delivery delays. The USS Ford cost 20% more than expected. The total cost of the program, the study, plus delivery of the first three versions of the Navy order is $42 billion. On the other hand, if the USS Ford is more than two years behind schedule, it is rightfully so. This is mainly due to the new class of aircraft carrier, and incorporates many new technologies such as fiber optics and electromagnetic catapult systems for aircraft. Thanks to its well thought out design, it has a smaller command island. This leaves more room on the deck. Air operations are easier, there are several galleys on board the ship. They alone must produce more than 15,000 meals a day. This is done to feed up to 4,660 passengers continuously on board the ship. Because of the design of the Ford class aircraft carrier, it employs 500 fewer people than the Nitzmas aircraft carrier. Of course, the ship must have all the necessary medical equipment, including the dentist's office. Unfortunately, these days, all that is not exactly rosy on the USS Ford. According to the recent Pentagon report, it seems that the ship has been disappointing results. Most of the blame centers on the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. This is just their latest technology for launching aircrafts. The system alone costs $3.5 billion. The advantage is that it would require much less maintenance. However, in sea trials, the electric magnetic catapults averaged 181 successful launch cycles. The system should be able to do 4,166 before problems arise. Three more Ford class ships have already been announced. So far, the budget is in the tens of billions of dollars. And in France, it has been rumored that the aircraft carrier that will replace Charles de Guano will also have such a catapult. What do you think of this decision? Would it be a good idea for France to follow the example of the American USS Ford? Let us know what you think in the comments. We've unfortunately reached the end of our video, but don't worry, because if you like this one, we'll have the chance to see many others of the same kind. All you have to do is leave a little blue thumb on this one, but more importantly, subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment to suggest our next topic, and activate the notification bell to be among the first to see the next video. We'll see you soon on ATEC.